energy signature of the human body. Given the variety of the types and kinds of experiences we can create, the journey of exploration into our creativity suggested the need for a different understanding about the human body than just being a biological system and a different interpretation about the energy we sense and how our mind characterizes that energy into thoughts. The concept of the energy signature of an object with many superimposed energy signatures of the component parts creates an overall energy structure, helps to provide the understanding about the profound energy nature of the human body. However, before we proceed, it needs to be remembered that the focus of this recording is directed at empowering our creativity and our creative imagination and uses the creativity perspective. Some of the concepts presented are analogies and serve a pedagogical purpose. One should not assume they are exactly the way creation works, but are effective for our creativity and exploration of creation. Although these concepts may be used literally, in some situations you are encouraged to see them symbolically. As discussed in the topic energy signature, we can experience the body as a biological machine or experience the body as an experience of energy and every atom and molecule in the body has an energy signature superimposing their energy signature to create the overall energy being that we are. It needs to be remembered whether energy is existing as a non-localized wave energy or as a localized particle form like our body. The wave nature of both non-localized energy waves or energy localized in the particles extend through all of infinity. As such, we no longer need to be bound to a belief that binds our perception to a particular locality, for the wave nature of our body extends to all of the infinite, although it may be perceived as minuscule. Yet, as minuscule as it may be perceived, it can still have an influence on what we are experiencing. Here we need to return to the discussion in the topic energy signature about the energy signature of atoms. It was said all atoms will have a unique energy signature and any molecules made up of atoms will have a unique energy signature resulting from the superimposition of all the atoms creating the molecule. This means the wave nature of the molecule or any object created from molecules will have an energy signature whose wave nature will be a composite of the energy waves of the various amplitudes and frequencies carried by the components. There will be no molecules with a monochromatic wave of a single frequency. Physically, the human is the sum total of all the molecules in the body and can vary by how the body changes. As such, the energy signature of the human body is extremely complex and can change as can the energy signature of the components of the body like the organs of the body. To talk about the energy signature of the human body, we need to remember everything in physical creation is composed of energy and so is our body. Most see the body as a collection of cells, tissues, organs, or organ systems, all composed of atoms and molecules. Some individuals involved in energy work and healing report that they can read the energy of various organs or body components, especially body components that are diseased. In many ways, this is like listening to a symphony where although you hear the whole symphony, you can focus energetically sensing organs of the body as on a particular instrument section like the trumpets, violins, drums, French horns, and the like. So the ability to sense what is occurring energetically in a particular organ or part of the body makes perfect sense if we have tuned ourselves or focused our attention and awareness to perceive it. Here it is suggested we look at the body analogously more as an energy symphony. As in a symphony, there is an overall sound, so to the body, there is an overall energy signature. As in the symphony, there are individual musicians making music and individual sections of instruments like the violins, trumpets, and the like making music. The body has individual molecules and energy signatures which can be recognized, and then there are organs and structural components with their individual energy signatures depending on how we focus our attention and awareness. With or without some amplifying device, we can or could perceive all of these different energy signatures. In many ways, the electroencephalogram and the electrocardiograms are forms of mechanical device sensing the energy from body organs. In creating the human being, in addition to all the energy signatures of the atoms and molecules, our awareness gives rise to our creative spirit reflected in the creative life energy that energizes and sustains our life. 
Here we need to understand this creative life energy or creative spirit, if one wishes to use the term spirit, energetically is not a single frequency. Rather, it has its own energy signature that is multidimensional as discussed in the topic, construction of the body as an energy vehicle and its energy signature. The energy signature of our creative spirit gets superimposed on the energy signature of our body. The intertwining of the energies of all the body's components and the energies within our creative spirit is what energetically gives rise to the mind-body-spirit connection. How we focus our attention and awareness determines what we actually perceive and the experience in the mind-body-spirit connection. Normally we are focused outwardly into the material world we inhabit and rarely pay attention to and feeling the energy we are perceiving inwardly and outwardly. On a purely physical level, most probably understand our body absorbs and radiates energy. It is known the human body radiates electromagnetic energy in the form of infrared radiation. The heart itself produces an electromagnetic field with each contraction and its magnetic field extends outside the body. Similarly, brain waves are routinely measured. As for receiving energy, we are familiar with our five senses, receiving where we see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. But there is also a sixth way of sensing, and often we are unaware that we are using this sixth sense. The sixth sense is about sensing the energy that lies beyond the five senses, and the energy does not go through a sensor. Traditionally, this way of sensing has been associated with psychic and intuitive type abilities. But this sixth sense actually gives rise to all the energy-related aspects to our being reported in the wide range of phenomena that can be seen as energetic interactions. The sixth sense is probably best described as our intuition. It is capable of receiving energy beyond our normal range of experiences. We are energetic beings and both transmit and receive energy, much of which we are not sensitive to either transmitting or receiving and this includes energies beyond our normal range of physical senses. Here we need to make a note that some of the organs and body structures will radiate and receive energy well beyond our normal awareness and the ability to physically measure. Yet we can become aware of the organs and structures. Our unique DNA structure is one such structure with its own unique energy signature that allows us to perceive things others do not see because of its uniqueness within our being. The body is a marvelous sensing device, capable of sensing subtle differences of energy within our environment and our being if we are paying attention and aware of what we feel. As a creative tool accessing the energy of creation to create thoughts, we can look at the mind and the body like a radio. Relative to radios, at any given instant there are numerous radio signals passing through the radio antenna but the radio only picks up those signals for the frequencies for which the antenna and sensor are designed. For example, the different designs for an AM antenna and receiver versus an FM antenna and receiver. If the AM and FM antenna are next to each other, they both sense the same energies. Each antenna only selects the energy wave for which it is designed. As with a radio, the radio receiver will be concentrated on the signal we select by tuning our radio. In doing so, we will extract the information in the energy signal and hear the particular broadcast associated with the radio signal we select. Sometimes we only get static because there's no signal to receive or we are too far from the signal to receive it and there is some interference that masks the signal. Nevertheless, we will receive that signal to which we tune the receiver. Relative to the discussion of radio signals, here it needs to be noted all communication is energy based. Any flow of energy, as a minimum, carries information about the origins of the flow. It is only a matter of knowing how to extract the information carried by the energy. When viewed from the perspective of a human being, analogous to the radio, the structure of the body is like an antenna. It has been designed to receive and detect a certain range of energies. As an antenna, our body is especially designed for sensing and amplifying a particular type and kind of energy or range of energies that ultimately determine our receptiveness to have an experience of physical creation as a human being. That is, because of our body, the energy we normally sense tends to hold our awareness localized in the physical experience of a human being. Alternatively said, our body causes us to interpret the energy we sense into thoughts about being a human being as opposed to being some other life form in physical creation or is an infinite creator and routinely going to other realms of creation. 
The mind is analogous to the receiver of the radio, which can be tuned to a particular energy. What we think and believe, the experiences we have, the environment in which we find ourselves, and how we focus our attention and awareness in what we think and believe, tunes the receiver and determines the particular thoughts we have for a particular energy we sense. As with the body, our human mind is also designed to interpret the energy we sense into thoughts about being a human being as opposed to being some other life form or as an infinite creator routinely going to other realms of creation. Although it is possible to step outside the normal range of energy for which the body and mind were designed, what is accessed and characterized is still biased by the human interpretation of the information carried in that energy. As discussed in the topic, energy conversion of thoughts, our mind, by how we think and believe, creates a resonant cavity that can capture energy and convert the energy into thoughts. Given the complexity of our energy structure of our mind, body, and creative spirit, the amount of information we can sense, the amount of information stored in our mind, and what our mind thinks and believes, and how it rearranges what it thinks and believes, our mind creates a multitude of different resonant cavities in a multitude of different areas within our mind, body, spirit structure. Think of learning a new language. Initially, none of what is said makes sense and all that you hear is the equivalent of noise and everything you hear just passes through. You have no receiver to access the energy of the noise to extract the information. But when you learn the language, a whole new world and understanding opens up for you for you now have a receiver tuned to the energies of the new language. You begin to have thoughts that you never had before. You begin to capture what was noise into a world of new thoughts. In essence, you have changed your resonant cavities for the creative thoughts. If you wish, you can now say you resonate with the new language. As a minimum, you will now have resonant cavities for your native language and the new cavities for the new language within your energy structure. You also change your energy signature. This in turn changes your thoughts and how you interact with the world. In regards to resonant cavities within our mind-body-spirit structure, the same mindset could create resonant cavities within the body to be receptive to energies of which we are totally unaware. What this means is we have some beliefs that seem inconsequential. However, those beliefs can create a resonant cavity and may open us up to thoughts we otherwise would not have had when we experience the right energy and the energy interacts with our mind-body structure. Here again, the receiver and tuner is our mind and what we think and believe. Based on what our creative imagination has been able to create, it is suggested we open ourselves to thinking to accept the possibility we both sense and radiate energies well beyond what we are physically aware. Think of visible light and realize the electromagnetic spectrum goes well beyond the visible light in both directions of higher and lower frequencies. It is really only recently in human history we learned of the energy frequencies that lie outside our vis visible range of light and have learned how to use them. Now what is being proposed here is that it is about learning to access and experience energies outside our normal range of perception, both adjusting ourselves to what we transmit and to what we receive. Here one needs to do their own experiments to see what we are receptive to in our life. The complexity of all the energies of all the components making up who we are and how they interact within us and our external world gives rise to quite a few diverse phenomena. The energy structure created gives rise to all the energy related aspects of our being reported in the wide range of phenomena that can be seen as energetic interactions. For example, the phenomena include such experiences as seeing the future, remote viewing, channeling, spirit guides conversation with individuals who pass, near-death experience, past life experiences, experiences in other realities, ancestral healing, energy healing, spontaneous healing, mind-body connections, and other similar experiences where the individual's perception seems to transcend what we would call the understanding of the traditional human mind. Exactly how all of these phenomena work goes well beyond what can be provided here, but they arise out of our composite energy structure and how we tune our mind and creative imagination to accept any one of these phenomena. Here we present some of the particular energy related dependent aspects of our body, each of which can be a journey of exploration unto themselves. The body as a vehicle. First and foremost, the human body is a vehicle for the physical experience, but it's not so much the physical experience as in the experience of the energy of creation and in particular physical creation. 
as a vehicle is not something like a car that needs to be fixed and we take it to a mechanic, although that may be the case for certain injuries. Rather, it is an energy vehicle and by managing our energy we keep it in a healthy and operating condition. Our body has been created by our higher self and it is the perfect vehicle for the experiences we desire to have. It is a unique, large, complex energy structure. It is dynamic and our energy structure responds to the energy we experience and our experiences change our energy structure which in turn changes the types and kinds of thoughts we can have because of the experiences. Needs of the body. Any creation will have true needs that when met allow the creation to grow and unfold and reach its maximum potential. The human body is in many ways a creation with a collection of different components creating an overall energy structure. There are needs for this body overall, but there are needs for individual components and there are needs if we desire certain types and kinds of experiences. Since the body is a living organism, it constantly takes in food and the food we take in can change us energetically and what we can and cannot do. So the question is, what does the body need and what do we need for what we wish to create? We need to be aware that we are unique and we each have unique needs for our body and we need to become aware of what we feel and what the body communicates to us. When the body has certain needs it will communicate. For example, if it's hungry, we have hunger pains. But this is true for many different needs. The challenge then is to pay attention to what our body is feeling and how energetically we are. If we are not feeling well and we do not have the energy that we would like, the question is where is our energy needs not being met or are we having other problems that of which we need to become aware? The big challenge here is to pay attention to what we need and pay attention to what we desire to eat, drink, and experience for these are the things that can help motivate us into life and to create a life worth living. Each of our true needs will have an energy signature and what needs to be provided will resonate with our need and we will need to pay attention to what resonates. So too what we desire to create within our body. It too will have unique needs. The body is an antenna. As discussed, the body functions as an antenna. Our body will absorb energy and transmit energy. What we need to be aware of is what we are feeling and sensing to see what thoughts we are getting. Here we need to become aware if we have shut down our ability to feel because we're afraid of pain or the pain of the past is so big it binds our energy and ability to feel. The challenge here is we need to be open to what we feel. It is about becoming aware that the body can tell us of its needs and communicate those needs to us. It also can communicate to us dangers that may be lurking that we energetically sense and perceive. The question is what energy is the body sensing and how does our mind interpret that energy into creating thoughts we need to live the life that allows us to live a life that serves us. Body Wisdom the body is a dynamic energy system and is constantly changing to some degree by the foods we eat and what we do in the environment we are in and what we are thinking and believing. Overall, it is an overall energy system and monitors itself and will inform us of what it needs or if something is not quite working. We all have felt a certain level of pain when we're tired. If we fall, we get hurt, we may feel pain. But separate from those kinds of pains, there is a body wisdom. The body wisdom knows what it needs and it also knows what it is here to do because it is the perfect vehicle for what we are here to do. We will get insights and they are more of an intuitive insight as to what our body needs and why for what it may want to experience because of our life path. After all, the life path is what we want to experience and the body is the physical vehicle to give us those experiences. The body communicates through feeling and we need to be open to what we feel and connect to those feelings. The mind-body connection. The mind-body connection is simply that we are an energetic composite and we have many, many different components that come together to give us an overall energy structure. We will radiate or sense energy. Depending on how this energy is processed within our being, Life can be very pleasurable and enjoyable or it can be a traumatic and painful experience. So the big challenge is what is the arrangement of our body-mind-spirit connection such that we optimize our health and we live a fulfilling life for why we are here. In terms of resources, our inner guidance will supply, lead, or direct us to certain things so that we can function and have our true needs met. 
In doing so, we are pulled to places where we can have those needs met, and the more we are aware of what we are feeling and what we are sensing and how our mind-body connection is working within us to feel and sense energy, the more we can tune ourselves to the way of living that provides us the health that we need for what we are here to do. Illness. There appears to be two types of accident, illnesses, and disease. One type of accident, illness, and disease is where we do not finance health for whatever reason. We do not give our body what it needs to have health. Another type of accident, illness, and disease is because it gives us certain experiences that we can only have for our reason for incarnating that can only be expressed through the illness, accident, and disease. So there are some experiences that we have to have an abnormal condition to be able to experience what it has to offer. Now one thing about the body is the body is a vehicle for the physical experience. We incarnated to have certain physical experiences. In having those physical experiences, we feel full of life because that is why we're here. That is, the life we have is geared towards living the life we came to have. When we live the life we came to have, we have the energy and the passion and what we need to live that life. So in some ways, accident, illness, and disease arise when we are not following our life path and we've gotten off course so we're not financing the life we need to live. So the issue is not going around trying to prevent illness as much as it is living the passion within our heart for what we incarnated to do and trust that it will give us the life that we need to accomplish what we came to do. Healing ultimately comes from within our own being. Ultimately, it's about how does our energy structure need to rearrange itself to create a condition of health. Outside intervention may be needed to assist the healing process, but the healing comes from within. Healing is too broad and deep a topic to address here, but the main issue is something is not allowing our creative life energy that is flowing and sustaining our life to flow in a way that creates healing and health. There is a very strong mind-body-spirit connection which needs to be addressed in some way. Depending on the issue, it may involve changing in one or all three. It, that is, changes in mind, changes in the body, or changes in the spirit. Rituals. Whatever we do in life, we need to integrate the mind-body-spirit. By using the body in a ritual, it makes the intent we hold in our mind physical. Rituals serve an important purpose in that the ritual is something that we do that engages the body based upon something we hold in our mind and want to manifest. The ritual creates both a body memory and a memory in mind as to the commitment we are making. For example, graduation ceremonies are a typical experience where you are given a certificate, a degree, or some type of indication that you have completed and have a set of accomplishments that you now have encoded within your being. The act of going through the ritual gives you the body memory that you can always fall back on to know that you have met certain certifications or requirements. Your body memories created through the ritual affirm your ability, whatever that ability may be. Hopefully the ritual will help you from never doubting the qualification and abilities you have obtained in graduating and completing the requirements. Body memories. One needs to realize our body goes everywhere with us as long as we're human. Even if we are asleep or having an out-of-body experience, our body is with us until we die. It remembers all that we experience. The body memories are the realization that we are an energetic system and that our energy system can rearrange itself by the experience it has to store memories. As we have an experience, we experience energy and that energy impacts our body. We move and respond to that energy that we experience. That movement and response to the energy creates a body memory. The question is, is it a memory that the energy experienced of just passes through or is it something that stays and becomes bound? When energy is bound, we limit our freedom of movement in some way. A big part of it depends upon how much energy is associated with the memory and whether the memory is pleasurable or not pleasurable. The more energy that is there at the time of the experience, the more the memory becomes fixed and it can bind our energy. Bound energy does not allow us the freedom. The freedom to move past that energy with freedom because we are bound to its pleasure or otherwise. Either we are looking for more of the pleasure or trying to avoid the pain. In either case, we limit our freedom to be available to move in response to whatever is occurring in the moment. 
in closing this discussion, the thought we wish to leave you with is that who and what you are in mind, body, and spirit has a unique energy signature, and this unique energy signature can change. This energy structure is determining how we experience creation, for it is energetically constantly interacting with creation. Within this energy structure are resonant cavities determined by our mindset that determine what energy we can capture into thoughts. We are a dynamic, ever-changing energy process depending on what we eat, liquids we drink, the air we breathe, what we feel and sense in our environment, and what we think and believe. All of these things can impact the energy within our being and our energy structure. It is advantageous to each of us to become aware of our uniqueness and what does and does not serve our being. It is very beneficial to look to see if we are creating thoughts which serve us and move us towards expanding our awareness in all aspects of life.